If you're getting this warning message, deprecated behavior, hidden method calling will be disabled in a future MQL compiler version, and you're confused by what it means, then you're probably not alone. But today I'm going to explain to you why you're getting the message and show some ways that you can fix this. Just before we get straight into the code, let me explain. This is a warning message only. Your code will still work. You don't need to remove this, but I do recommend that you take some action on it because when you get the message that says will be disabled in a future MQL compiler version, you don't really know which version it will be disabled in. And so I like to get rid of these warning messages as soon as possible. I also just generally like not to have warning messages in my code. It just helps with the automatic compile process so that I know that everything's clean. If you would like to remove this message, then I'm going to show what's causing it with a very brief example. And then I'm going to show how you can fix this in three different ways. And I'll explain the good and the bad of each of those methods. So let's get into the code now. And I have a script prepared that will already generate this warning message so that we can then set straight into fixing it. I have a script here that should demonstrate the problem. So to very quickly explain what I have, I've got a parent class, this class C parent. I've declared a virtual integer function called next. And for next, I'm just looking for the next number. So really adding one. Uh, it takes one number argument and returns next num comma one. And so here is the overloaded function, also a virtual, where I take that original number and the increment. So this lets me call next with a varying increment. So the basic function next just adds one. This function will add whatever that increment is. And I'm using this function to, or I'm using this to call this. Okay, that's in the parent class. Ignore these next two lines for now. I'll just carry on explaining next. Then I've decided I have a child class. And in here, I want the next with the increment argument to not just give me the next number by increment, but to give me the next odd or even number by increment. And the easiest way to do that is to simply multiply that increment by two. So this function you can see is num plus increment multiplied by two, where this was just num plus increment. Okay, that all looks fairly normal. I know the example itself makes no sense, but the way I'm structuring these classes seems normal. I've got a single function here. I have an overloaded function with a different set of arguments. And then in the child class, I have the same arguments as this overloaded function but I don't need to overload this original function because that function is still valid. So what will happen when I make a call, as I have down here, I have this print format child.next. And when I call child.next, this will actually call this function first inside the parent. And that function will attempt to call next with the two arguments, which will then call child because I've declared this object as a type child. That's the way it should work and it looks all normal. And in fact, that's the way it will work. But when I compile, I will get the infamous compiler error. That's the first thing. The second is here. I have this int positions total. Now, just assume for the time being that I want to return positions total for a particular type. So there is already an inbuilt function called positions total, takes no arguments and returns the total number of positions that you have. I want to return this positions total for a given type. Now I'm not actually doing the calculation here, just assume that I'm doing some calculation and I'm returning a number that tells me how many positions I have of that type. This is also a normal sort of function to create. And if I put this inside code somewhere, I would have no problem at all. It doesn't clash with the original function because it has a different set of arguments. And so it's essentially a different function. And then I just have this positions count, which will simply return the original positions total, no arguments. Okay. So let me compile this and I should get two compiler warnings. And there they are, deprecated behavior, hidden method calling will be disabled in a future MQL compiler version. I just double click on that one and it takes me to this line first. So child.next, that's a problem. And I double click the second warning and it takes me here. Positions total is a problem. Okay. So first to explain what the message means. Um, and I guess in saying that, I have absolutely no idea what the words are meant to convey. 
but I do know that the problem is coming because when I call child next, I expect to call this function. So from, let me close up this messages. From this statement, as I said, I expect to call this, which will in turn call this, which is this. And that's fairly typical. I have a parent class with a whole bunch of functions and for a particular implementation, I want to override one of those functions. The reason I'm getting the error is that this overloaded function is the same name as this function, but I haven't included this function in the child class. Now, as far as I'm concerned, that should be fine, but someone has obviously found a hypothetical case where that creates a problem and decided to remove this functionality in the future. So there are several ways to fix that. I know of three ways to fix this uh, warning message. They all have their problems and I'll go through each of them. If someone knows of more options, then please leave comments so that we can help everyone else out. Before I go on show those alternatives, let me also explain this. In positions total, this should be an independent function of the original positions total, but by placing this inside the class, it works just like these next functions. There is this hypothetical positions total with no arguments in a parent class, even though I have no parent class, it's in the inbuilt parent classes. And so I'm getting the same problem here where I'm trying to call a function that is declared in a super class to C parent. In fact, if I, let's just address this one first. If I take those two functions out and I'll just put them here and compile, then I still have this child next error, but the second deprecated behavior message is gone. So these statements are obviously fine outside of the class, but once I put them inside a class, it becomes a problem. Uh, and I'm not going to just take them out of the class as the way of fixing this problem because this is a fairly simple example. I'm not meant to fix just this example. I want to show you how to fix this if you have a valid reason for creating this kind of function. So I'll put those back into the parent class. Let's fix this positions total first uh, because the fix for this is very similar or the same as the first fix for the next. And it's a little different situation though. Because positions total is a built-in function, I'm calling the built-in function here what I need to do is tell the compiler exactly where it can find positions total. It's expecting to find one inside this class and because it doesn't find it, it's looking in the parent, the ultimate parent, which is inside the terminal and it's warning about that hidden message. So to actually be explicit about where it can find positions total, I can add a double colon. Let me just compile again and you can see again that message is gone. Let me remove the double colon again just to prove, compile, and now I have two deprecated behavior messages. So that's the simple case where I'm calling an inbuilt function and I've had this warning message, put the double colon ahead of the simple function and that simply says to call the ultimate parent class for positions total. So leaving that one aside, let's get on to our example here with the next functions. So the first option is to also explicitly tell the compiler where to find the next function. And I can do that down here in the child.next. Instead of just child.next, I can go child.cparent colon colon next. And if I compile that now, warning message is gone. I put this first because it's the option that I like least. It means that I actually have to know which parent class of this child class contains that next function. Now it's fine here, I only have the two classes and they're in the same file. But if I'm working with some kind of library which has possibly multiple classes and multiple levels of inheritance, I don't really want to track down where this original function existed. I just want to be able to call it. So this option works, but I really don't like it because that should be somewhat invisible to me as the consumer of this child class. Let's take that out for now. The next option is to simply not reuse this name. So I've called my function here next, which just takes one argument. I have another function also called next, which takes two arguments. That's normally perfectly fine, but
but I can also avoid the warning message by call this something like next to, which means I have to call this next to because that is actually the overload for this function. And it also means that is next to. And so now I can see child.next is still being called. That should still call this function, which will in turn call this function. I compile that. Oh, wrong parameters count. Ah. Needed to change that one as well. Okay. So I've taken care of the compile. Let's just prove to you that this all works. So what I'm doing, firstly, I'm calling parent.next with the argument of five. Parent.next with the argument of five will then call next two with an argument of 5 comma 1. So it should return 6 because by calling the parent class, that will then flow through to this function, which will return number plus increment and give me a 6. I'm also calling parent dot... I'll just change that as well so it's more explicit. Parent dot next 2 with 5 comma 3 and that should call this function and give me a result of 5 plus three, which is eight. Then here I'm calling the child function, or here I'm calling the function from the child class. I'm calling child.next5, which as I've said many times, should call this function, which will call this function, which is this function, which will return five plus two. So we'd be calling it with five comma one, and it will return five plus two. So I should get a result of seven from that. So I've already compiled it. I will go back to MetaTrader and run it and show in the Experts tab. Here is the deprecated script. I'm just going to run that. And here are my messages. Parent.next5 equals six, that's correct. Parent.next5 comma three equals eight. And child.next5 equals seven. So it's called all of the right functions, got exactly the answers I expect. In fact, even if I hadn't made these changes, I would still get the correct answers. So let me, I'll change everything back because I need to demonstrate something else. But that's obviously one answer is to simply change the name of this function. I don't like that because you should be able to do this. You should be able to simply overload a function by using different arguments. But obviously it's a problem with whatever is coming in the compiler. Uh, next two, I think that's everything. I need to change that back. Compile that. So I have the warning message again. I will go back here and I'll just erase all of that and run the script again. And I get the same answers, six, eight, and seven, exactly what I expect. So this still works, but you're getting the message. And up in the introduction, I said, you really need to watch these warning messages and particularly where this says that it will be disabled in a future version you really want to get on top of that now because you never quite know when that future version is. That's two options. First option is to be explicit here in the actual call to that next function about where the next function can be found, which I don't like because you shouldn't need to do that. The second is to change these names, which I also don't like because I really think that you should be able to simply have the same function name with different arguments. Uh, and also, if you're inheriting from an existing class, you probably can't change these names because the existing class is already using them for something. So changing the names is not really a great option. Uh, and the last that I have, which is again, not a great option, is to include this default value or the default function in the child class. I can do that. And I can do that in two ways. I can either leave this exactly as is, which means that it is including all of the logic from this function. Uh, and this is fairly simple logic here, but you can imagine this might be more complex. I'm including all of that logic. And this means I'm losing the benefit of the inheritance because if I come back to this parent class at some point and change this because I found an error, I don't actually know perhaps that I need to make the change here as well. So I'm just losing that. Uh, so that's one way to do it. And if I just compile this now, it should be fine. 
Yes, the warning message is gone. Uh, but the other thing I can do is to refer back to the parent class. So here I am calling the parent class next and num. So this is effectively the same function that I'm inheriting here and I'm just calling the parent, which means that if I make any changes in here, that's what's being called from here. And this is in turn calling, sorry, if I make any changes in here, this is in turn calling then this function. So if I compile that, that will also work. And just to demonstrate that that still works, let's go back and have a look. Clear that, run deprecated, six, eight, seven, same answers. So including this, C parent colon colon is a way of fixing the problem here inside the child class. I don't like this for two reasons. Um, firstly, it means that I have to actually implement this next function, which I shouldn't have needed to do because it's already there in the parent class, but that's the very behavior that's being deprecated. So I guess I can't get around that. Uh, and secondly, I still have to include this reference to the parent class that contains that function. It's similar to including the name of the parent class in this statement, but not quite as bad. When I'm writing this statement, I'm in the final consumer. I'm in the on start of my uh, script. Now here I can see the classes that I'm using, but if these classes are hidden inside a library, I don't necessarily know which class actually contains that next. And I don't even know what is the parent class of this child class. I just know that I'm using the child class. So having to include C parent colon colon here is not a good option. It's not great here, but at least here I know that C parent is the parent class of C child. Uh, and in fact, if I put a class in the middle, So I've just inserted a C mid class here, which inherits from C parent and my C child now inherits from C mid. I can change that to C mid colon colon next and this still compiles there. So at least with this option, I don't need to know which class contains that next statement. I just need to know the parent class of my current class. Uh, now it would be the same here. I could put child dot c mid colon colon but as i said in this part of my code i don't necessarily know what the parent of the child class is so this is my preferred option of three bad choices uh, as i said earlier if you have a better option then please leave a comment and help everyone out but that's how you can correct this infamous deprecated behavior hidden method I hope this has been useful to you. If it has, then please click the like button. And if you want to see more of our videos, click subscribe and click the bell icon. Until next time, thank you for watching.